Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of France in Focus. Now, when it comes to having babies, France is Europe's most fertile country. More than 760,000 new births were recorded during the year 2017. But that number was 2% lower than 2016. And for three consecutive years now, there's been a downward trend. Well, as we examine this issue of France's falling birth rate, we brought you here to the maternity ward of the Diaconess Hospital in Paris. We're going to start by talking you through a few numbers. In 2017, France's birth rate dropped for a third consecutive year, with some 767,000 births, including in the country's overseas territories. A long way from the levels of 1971, then 900,000 babies were born on the French mainland alone. A fertile year indeed. More worrying still, the so-called natural balance of births and deaths is at its lowest since the end of the Second World War. Not only is the number of women of a childbearing age waning, French women are also having fewer kids. From an average of 2.03 children in 2010, the number falls to 1.88 children in 2017. And that's a cause for concern, as the generation renewal rate is of 2.07 children. Despite all this, France remains Europe's baby maker. In 2016, French mothers led the pack with 1.92 children, followed by the Swedes, the Irish, Danes, and the British. By comparison, Southern European countries are lagging behind. The average in Italy and Spain is of just 1.34 children, 1.36 for Portugal, and 1.38 for Greece. Are you seeing a trend towards having babies later on in life? Yes, we see women having children later in life. We have patients who are getting close to 40. Even if most of them are in their 30s, we have a few in their 20s and more and more in their 40s. So those are the numbers. Let's take a closer look now at some of the reasons for this fall in the birth rate here in France. We spoke to Magali Mazoui from the French National Demography Institute. Here's what she told us. Magali My name is Magali Mazoui. I'm a demographer at the National Institute for Demographic Studies. It's due to two main factors, a lower number of women of childbearing age, and that women now have fewer children in comparison with a few years ago. At the moment, it's too early to say. What we're mainly seeing is a lower birth rate as far as very young women are concerned. But it remains mostly stable for older women, or it's slightly going down. Fertility levels are actually pretty high in France. So yes, lower birth rates are slightly problematic, but possibly future generations will see equally high or stable fertility rates. And after all, women are allowed to choose how many children they want to have. Perhaps as France's poverty levels worsen, underprivileged couples are putting off having children as they wait for better days. So we don't know how much of an impact the economy might play in that decision. Birth rates are higher in regions with more young people, in fashionable areas where the population isn't so old. The north of France is the most fertile. There are differences also as regards to whether people had access to higher education. Women with a university degree often choose to put off money. The longer women spend on their studies, the later they have children. Mm. 
Opening up IVF to gay couples is unlikely to bring about a significant rise in the number of births. IVF for all won't lead to a rise in births, however, it will help remove stigma from a certain type of family construct. Gay couples with kids are still a very small minority, and heterosexual couples who use IVF are also a minority. And you could say that they might just have needed a bit more time to have children without medical assistance. Hi, Marine. Hi, Tom. Congratulations. Thank you. This is Alma. Yes. And she's how old now? Uh, four, four days. Four days? Yes. Okay. <laughs> she's behaving herself. Yes, she's, she's <laughs> nice. And may I ask how old you are? I'm 40. Okay. Yep. And how old was your mother when she had her first child? She was uh, 29. 29, so, yeah. so a big difference. Things are changing, aren't they? Yes, a lot. A lot. Well, French mothers are getting older, with the average French woman waiting until the age of 30 years and six months before having her first child. That's a lot later than a few decades ago, and even now, 30 sounds quite young to a lot of people, with many women waiting till much later than that. Well, let's take a closer look now at this phenomenon. In France, becoming a mother after the age of 45 is no longer unthinkable. The risks involved with putting off pregnancy didn't deter this new mother. She's 44 years old and has just had her first child, Mathieu, who's two days old. For the couple, their careers came first. We're both business executives. We worked a lot abroad. We didn't have time. Afterwards, we said we'd better get on with it. Until you found out you're pregnant. We were very happy. <laughs> to her surprise, it was an easy pregnancy. We're older. My husband is 50 and it's his first child too. But we said, well, it's an experience. We're going to try. Maybe it's better when you're older, because maybe you handle the stress better. I don't know. Hopefully I'm up to the task. In this hospital, some 200 babies a year are born to older mothers. Both they and their newborns are more prone to health risks. We know very well there are more cases of hypertension, of complications, diabetes, premature birth, caesareans, hemorrhages. All these complications are two to three times more common after the age of 40. But this is normal and can be kept in check as long as there's a good level of care. As science progresses, women are increasingly able to beat their biological clock. But this doctor says women in their mid-40s shouldn't get their hopes up. Sometimes I get 44, 45-year-old patients who want my opinion. I tell them exactly what's written on their medical examination. I tell them they have very little chance of getting pregnant naturally or even with medical assistance. You need to inform, not cause panic, and guide the patient instead of making them feel guilty. In that respect, Anne and Christophe were lucky. It's a revolution. It's super. It's such a joy. They met in 2013 and married two years later. Anne was 47 when she became a mother. For the couple, the trials of early parenthood will continue well into their 50s. It puts things into perspective, though. I think at 20 I would have been more worried, tense, a bit like that. I'm more cool now. What do you think, Christophe? It's definitely harder. Is it tiring? Physically? Yeah, it's harder physically. Anne's own mother was an older mum. She was afraid the 44-year age gap would create problems for Anne at school. I didn't want to pick her up at school because I was afraid the other kids would tease her and ask her if I were her grandmother. That's never happened. I've never had anyone say that to me. We'll see if my kids get those comments one day. But today there are more and more women who have children later on in life. 
Donc, euh... So I tell myself, why not? They won't be alone, right? This year, 2,000 French women over 45 are expected to become mothers. That's three times as many as in 1990. Well, that's all we have time for for this week's edition of France in Focus. This week we've met some mothers and some babies, so we'll leave you here with a group of mothers-to-be. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to France 24. I'm Natalie Sabricas, and you'll usually find me in news reporting on Greece's enduring financial turmoil and protests, but also the refugee emergency here on France 24. Natalie Sabricas, one of the 160 France 24 correspondents around the world.